My father, Karl Dordig, was steeped in the traditions of European art and culture. However, from the outset, he was happy to break with these traditions and adopt the concepts of modernism. His art was innovative and experimental, and his idealistic spirit helped him to achieve many goals and to overcome the upheaval of the Second World War. To each age its art, to art its freedom. The mantra of the Viennese secession art movement was paramount in his lifelong practice. In these concepts, he was encouraged by his first teacher, the eminent Austrian sculptor Anton Hanak. Hanak recognised the potential of this new young student when Karl walked into his studio and picked up a fragment of plaster and carved it into a relief of Adam and Eve with his pocket knife. Karl's precocious talent was rewarded when Anton Hanak selected this mask 1921 in Salzburg marble to represent his faculty in an international exhibition in Munich. Described by a contemporary critic as Duldig's fabulous mask, it was the first of a number of carvings in marble that Karl completed in the 1920s. These sculptures demonstrated the sculptor's ability to visualise the form in the raw block of stone and virtually extract a head or a figure without any preliminary drawings, models or maquettes. This working method was entirely innovative and was encouraged by Anton Hanak and had not been practised in European sculpture since the days of Michelangelo. The method is perhaps best illustrated by this sculpture, Kneeling Nude, which Anton Hanak selected to represent the faculty in the Jubilee exhibition of the Kunstgewerbeschule in 1929. Karl's professional career in Austria came to an abrupt end in 1938 when the annexation of Austria by Nazi Germany forced our family to flee. Thrust into a foreign environment and unfamiliar cultures, first briefly in Singapore and then in Australia, it is remarkable how Karl was nevertheless able to find new ways of artistic expression, responding to difficult situations with characteristic idealism and resilience. This is particularly well illustrated by this head fragment, which was carved while our family was interned in Tatura in 1940. The only tool Karl had was an axe, and he carved the head in firewood. Unfortunately, a life-size mother and child figure, also carved with an axe, only survives in contemporary drawings. However, years later, he again carved a mother and child sculpture from a branch of a eucalyptus tree. Magna Mater is in the collection of the National Gallery of Victoria. The noted art historian Bernard Smith said of this work, Here Daldick seems to have stumbled upon one of the paths by which Australian sculpture might yet gain a certain independence and come into its kingdom. Carl said, and I quote, the material and its handling are the most important aspects of sculpture. Every material has its rules and individual beauty that can be interpreted in its own way. Stone, wood, clay, bronze, copper, and so on. In Australia, Carl explored and worked hands-on in many different materials. He especially loved working in clay, as we can see in the sculpture garden of the Duldig studio. The malleable clay allowed Carl to model this head with a skeletal structure and an imagined void called profit. It was a new concept and was critically acclaimed in 1953. This idea was further explored in figures, heads and masks 
And in this head of Nofretiti, the artist is interpreting the wonderful portrait of the Egyptian queen in his own way. Also originally modelled in clay, Carl's powerful and unusual interpretation of Moses. At the moment when he is about to break the tablets of the Ten Commandments, won him the title of Victorian Sculptor of the Year in 1956. Moses was subsequently acquired by the National Gallery of Victoria, the first modernist sculpture by an Australian sculptor to be purchased by that institution. Major commissions gave Carl the opportunity to build life-size sculptures in clay. This figure, Echo, was built up entirely hollow from the bottom up without an armature. A remarkable achievement. My father was extremely happy when the fragile clay figure survived the transport and firing entirely intact. Similarly, a commission for St Mary's Church in Altona was also built up entirely hollow and was installed high on the church spire. Corresponding with the post-war building boom in Australia, Carl worked on a number of commissions to decorate walls with bas-relief murals for domestic houses and for public buildings. This modernist room for a St Kilda residence was designed by the architect Ernst Fuchs and the furniture is by the noted craftsman Shulim Krimper. This relief of Adam and Eve is in the collection of the city of Glenira. The largest of these murals was for a 1960 high-rise office block in St Kilda Road. The mural could be seen from across the other side of the wide boulevard. Carl devised original ways of making the tiles, of modelling the relief and of decorating with underglaze colour. It reflected the historic highlights in art and architecture. The construction of the pyramids, the Parthenon, the Gothic churches, the skyscraper, all inspired by the woman with the family unit at the very top. Its title, Progress of Man, illustrates Carl's idealised vision of society and approach to life. The artist's idealised vision is also evident in the relief Australia Today and Tomorrow, in which he foresees a prosperous future through mining and invention for Australia. This relief, located in Council House, Little Collins Street, Melbourne, was constructed from hand-beaten copper, crumpled and moulded, and hung from a steel grid. He used the same technique for this half-kneeling figure on the grid which he kept for himself. Carl completed a number of commemorative commissions in stained glass and in other mediums. My mother Slava helped him select the glass for the windows. A representation of the Western Wall in Jerusalem is in the synagogue of the Melbourne Hebrew Congregation in St Kilda Road, Melbourne. Although quite abstract, the subject is nevertheless easily identified. At the Kadima Jewish Cultural Centre in Melbourne, Carl created a memorial wall consisting of six stained glass panels symbolising the six million Jews who lost their lives in the Holocaust. Even in the midst of this tragic memorial, Carl was still able to express hope for the future through his art, especially in the panels Youth and a New Dreamland and Flowers and the Star of David. This bronze Holocaust memorial relief was installed at the Melbourne General Cemetery in 1963. A contemporary journalist described it as follows full of tragic beauty and redolent of hope, and magnificent in design. Here, held for eternity in bronze, is the story of Jewish survival, hope and faith in the very abyss of terror. 
Carl's most important commission was the Hakoa Wien Holocaust Memorial to Jewish sportsmen and women. This is Carl's original maquette for the monument to Hakoa, which is in Israel. This work perhaps best illustrates his innovative modernist approach, his technical ability and his artistic vision. The over life-size figure was modelled in the artist's studio, cast in bronze and then finished by the artist in Melbourne. It was then shipped to Israel, where Carl supervised its installation on a cairn constructed from Jerusalem stone to his specifications. The monument represents a young athlete who rises like a phoenix from the destruction of a cruel past to welcome a time of renewal and hope. Carl's final commission, completed in his 83rd year, was a monument to the legendary war hero, Raoul Wallenberg. The head of Wallenberg represents the spirit of goodness and human survival to which we all aspire and which has overcome the powers of darkness to herald a period of peace.